What's up guys? Welcome back to Return Refuge Farm. My name is Jess um, and we're in the new year having an unseasonably warm snap. Um, it's also windy. I'm trying to protect you from that. Uh, this last week I didn't do very much gardening. My kids were home and so we went and spent a day at the beach and uh, did some quality time with Malia while she was still in from Vegas. But uh, while I was doing that, Will actually decided that he was ready to take on the task of resetting uh, part of our in-ground garden from last year. We just kind of had left it, left the chickens in here to kind of scratch a lot of stuff up, fertilize it. I asked him if he would be willing to turn the camera on so you guys could see the transformation of a space like this because it's just so satisfying. Um, you really enjoyed whenever I did a video a few weeks ago where there was just very little talking and it was just kind of like nice uh, working in the garden and he said he would be willing uh, so that's what we're gonna be seeing today hope you feel inspired and maybe it'll hold you over if you're having unseasonably warm weather right now not to go try to start your garden too early because in most places it is still too early <laughs> no matter how spring like it feels outside so let's watch this video These are the biggest okra plants I've ever seen in my life.
Hey guys, editing Jess here in my pajamas because I was really certain that I was done with video for today. I um, actually filmed a cl closure to this in the garden earlier, but upon piecing it together, I wanted to kind of give a little bit more information. So first, I want to make sure I do say this um, again. Will did an amazing job sharing this with us. He does have a YouTube channel called Honey Bee Hollow Gardens. Um, that is awesome. He shares permaculture and gardening and foraging, and I'll put a link down below if you would like to see that. I'm so thankful to have Will here. I, I don't g always get to engage with people who are as excited about growing things as I am. And I think that sometimes Will may even be more excited than I am, but uh, I don't know, that might be. <laughs> might be it's hard to do that was a really great picture kind of start to finish of putting a garden to bed for the winter and this is how we have always put the garden to bed for the winter if we have a space that we're not trying to continue planting over winter and it's basically um, adding a layer of organic matter mulch or compost um, will showed adding some different Kind of organic fertilizers, some manure from our cows, which of course our cows are fed um, clean hay, so we don't have to worry about contamination coming through on that. We put that organic matter down and then cover it, and you can wait until the following season to put the organic matter down, but if we remember that we're not just trying to feed our garden plants, we're trying to feed our soil, and establish a healthy microbiome. Going ahead and putting all that stuff down now will allow it to break down and integrate into the soil. The silage tarps are covering the top of that garden, um, which is going to allow on these really warm days that we're having any weed seeds that may still be existing in that space to go ahead and sprout and then they'll die out because there won't be sun for them. And we will leave that covered, allowing the cow manure and the chicken manure, which those were already somewhat broken down. Uh, the wood chips, the mulch, all that stuff will continue to break down over the course of the next handful of months. So it's January now, and we will leave that covered until we get prepared to plant that out, which will probably be somewhere in the realm of like the end of April. So our last frost estimated is the beginning of April, but the last few years here in the Midlands, it has been later than that. So we'll probably hold off and plant that towards the end of April, and that will largely remain covered. If we need to reallocate those silage tarps and use them elsewhere, what we will do when we pull that off is heavily mulch that area with a straw mulch that is from a source that we're able to verify isn't sprayed with something. Or maybe we would use kind of some rotted down clean hay and mulch it heavily to kind of try to deter weed seeds. Now that garden last year was the in-ground garden where we grew tomatoes and some peppers, lots of beans, some different arch trellises. We had some melons and some different things. I'm still nailing down where everything is going to be this coming spring because we have the big raised bed garden this year that we didn't have last year. So kind of still figuring it out. But 
I really, I really like that space. It's um, no dig, like we're, we won't be continuing to till that. So that was putting that to bed in a no dig style. And by adding that organic matter back in and then covering it over top, when it comes time to plant that in the spring, we'll just be able to pull that silage tarp out off and go ahead and plant and then mulch what we plant. So that's it. Thank you so much to Will for um, sharing that process so that everybody could see it. I think it's really educational and helpful and also just really peaceful to watch. So check him out and uh, thank you for hanging out with us today. I bless you. Until next time.